know that fear can be highly dangerous for your health and your child's growth. When your body detects fear, it releases cortisol and adrenaline. Your blood pressure and heart rate increase and some parts of your brain shut down, impairing you from reasoning and judging things clearly. In today's episode, I will talk about the role of fear. For those who don't know me, I'm Cristina Tumino, a holistic educationist and the founder of the Magical Bodies Method, where I can provide parents with a unique recipe to raise happy and fulfilled children. In one of my previous episodes, I talk about the emotional body. I explain the difference between emotions, feelings and intuition and the impact that these have on our lives. However, this time, I would like to focus on fear because out of all the emotions, I think fear is an important one to mention when it comes to how we live our lives, we grow and we parent. Fear is a fundamental emotion that protects us and helps us survive in danger. However, fear can often affect or even block our growth and that one of our children. We can easily find ourselves stagnant in situations, become paranoid or act like fools. We might unconsciously fear responsibilities, avoiding them and hiding behind excuses that prevent us from opening essential doors and growing. We can become overprotective of our children as a manifestation of fear. Fear of them getting badly injured, making mistakes, being hurt, being kidnapped, and so on. Others can easily manipulate us when fear is triggered in us, like fear of being hurt or fear of death. Fear fogs our brain and we act by impulse. It makes us feel desperate, angry, depressed, directionless, and it can rule us and our lives. As a result, thoughtlessly, we can look for the quickest and easiest fix. We can grab onto the first solution offered by a trustworthy person, source or organization. We can become suspicious. We can close up to life and trap ourselves in limbo, silently, feeding the fear with more fear. In some situations, fear can become a state that is constantly in the background and leads unconsciously. Occasionally, others can make us realize that we are or that we live in fear. However, an inner effort is necessary to gain awareness. Sometimes by simply stopping and breathing, we can gain an instant of control and therefore be able to think and rationalize the emotion in play. With personal reasoning, investigation, and analyzing facts and situations, we can manage the emotion. We can remove the fog in the head, see reality as it is, and act accordingly. For instance, we might fear suffering from an incurable disease and get into a vortex of negative thoughts and outcomes. However, by facing this fear and making, for instance, a medical test, we might realize that we can manage or even dispel that fear as the results of those tests might reveal a treatable disease or give us an idea of what plan to put into action to face a challenge. The key is to acknowledge when fear is at play and then use our mind and our soul to control it. Only when we identify the emotion, we can work on it and keep it under control. In other words, we can bring clarity, find solutions and peace of mind. We can gain freedom because we take on responsibility and do what is necessary to move on, to learn lessons, to grow, become stronger. Our minds can make us reason and control emotions. However, it needs to be supported by the physical and spiritual body too. Exercises, good nutrition, sleep, mindfulness and breathing can diminish or even eliminate anxiety, depression. It can release anger and can manage fear. Unfortunately, mainstream medicine often considers these as encouragements rather than effective treatments. 
they usually opt for medications that treat the symptom but not the source and which sometimes can have side effects and bring more harm instead. Learning how to be emotionally aware should be part of every individual's personal development, including the one of our children. In fact, we should teach our children how to be aware of their emotions, how to identify them and learn to manage them, especially those strong ones such as anger and fear. This is not a simple task because it is already hard for adults to do this ourselves and fear can affect us and the way we raise our children. We can instill fear in them, making them anxious and negatively impacting their self-esteem. And this is why self-work as parents is essential to educate our children. It can be very difficult for a parent to become aware of certain personal behaviors. And although we might claim to deeply love our children and most probably have the best intentions at heart, facts can show differently at times. So for instance, we can become overprotective because of our fears. And as a consequence, we can do what is more convenient for us rather than for them. We can find a fix quick, we can weaken the personalities and their abilities to face challenges in life. The idea of overprotection has taken ground in a way that now entire societies and children are becoming increasingly more prisoners, physically and figuratively speaking. And also it hinders children's growth. Children have an innate drive to take risks and there is a good reason for this. We learn to walk by trial and error, and by facing the fear of the unknown. Toddlers, for instance, are very unaware of the dangers and consequences of falling from a certain height or landing on unsafe uh, surfaces. However, on many occasions, we just need to teach them how to assess risks, or we need to create a safer environment so they can do so, rather than disallowing them completely. Parents should nurture this innate instinct correctly and from a very early age. We should train children to face fears with physical, emotional and mental challenges so they can become independent, responsible, self-aware and they can learn how to assess risks on their own. Things like encouraging children to climb trees, jump from certain heights, handle glassware when they are even two years old, manipulate scissors, knives, drills, can make skillful and stronger future adults. And the skills that we learn when we are very young are often the ones that we know best when we grow up. To be fair, whether we like it or not, life is unpredictable. And this is an important component of life. I like Jordan B. Peterson's view on this matter. In his book, entitled 12 Rules for Life, this Canadian clinical psychologist, professor and author explains the difference and importance of order and chaos, associating the first with the known territory and the latter to the unknown. This is a quote from his book. We eternally inhabit order surrounded by chaos. We eternally occupy known territory surrounded by the unknown. To straddle that fundamental duality is to be balanced, to have one foot firmly planted in order and security and the other in chaos, possibility, growth and adventure." End quote. So order gives us structure and security while chaos and therefore the unknown allows us to explore new things and grow. We need to be able to balance both and therefore to teach our children to do the same. We need to be able to give that order, structure and discipline that they need while allowing them to explore the unknown, take risks, learn skills about themselves and grow. How do you know if you are an overprotective parent? If you allow fear to rule you or some aspects of your life? How can you overcome your fears or your children overcome theirs? If you need support, or some advice on this matter, contact me at info at magicalparenting.co.uk. And to stay on topic, 
Don't be scared of liking, sharing and commenting this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and activate the notification bell so you don't miss out on other topics. Bye for now and see you soon.